Hello, my name is Nanette. Welcome to Nanette Chocolates. In today's video, I would like to recap some basic principles of tempering chocolate. Those of you who are familiar with my channel will know that I have already provided you with some detailed demonstrations of how to temper chocolate. If you've not seen these, I would encourage you to go and have a quick look. These cover how to simply temper chocolates, how to use the microwave method, how to use the seeding method, and also I show you how to specifically temper white chocolate. So today I just want to cover off the basic principles, but also to address some of the questions that you have been asking me following the other demonstrations on the channel too. Thank you so much for these. They have been brilliant. Keep them coming. So the first thing that I would encourage you to do when tempering chocolate is take time to practice. Correctly tempered chocolate is so much easier to deal with and it also makes your finished products look so much more professional. It is something that we will get right, but you just need to have a few goes at it. And I'm here to help you with that too. First of all, I have here a bowl of fully melted chocolate. Fully melted chocolate happens at 45 degrees. And what I'm doing here is just dipping my spatula into the chocolate and letting it drizzle. So you can see how fluid fully melted chocolate is. This is your starting point and you can choose to melt your chocolate in the microwave, for example. I use that more often than not simply because it's convenient. You'll see I'm also using a plastic bowl. I tend not to use a ceramic or a glass bowl uh, in the microwave simply because the material of the bowl itself will retain heat from the microwave. And when you are dealing with chocolates, it's hard to predict how the chocolate will behave when it is interacting with that residual heat from the, the material of the bowl itself. So keep it simple. Uh, the plastic is also a far cheaper, so that helps too. After you have melted your chocolate, what you need to do then is temper the chocolate. And one way is by using the seeding method. So I shall just quickly just recap that. This is my chocolate. It's uh, milk chocolate from Canabout, for example, lovely Belgian chocolate. And inside this bag are my seeds of chocolate. So just buttons of chocolate. And I add that to my bowl and stir them through. So what's happening here is that the heat of the melted bowl of chocolate is melting those newly introduced buttons. And as they melt, temperature of the whole bowl rapidly reduces. It requires time, movement and temperature, which is what's going on here. The movement is clearly what's happening with the spatula. It takes time simply because it takes a little while for the buttons to melt. It doesn't take a huge amount of time, so don't get worried about it. The working temperature that I'm looking for for milk chocolate is between 30 and 31 degrees C. So just going to put that down for a moment. Some of you have been asking about whether to reduce the chocolate temperature lower than that to about 28 degrees C. This is something that I have never done and I've never been taught to temper chocolate in that way. You would then, I have been told, increase the temperature back up to your working temperature of 30 to 31 degrees. My only fear with this method would be that you're introducing more crystals into the chocolate by reducing the temperature to that lower level. And in doing that, the chocolate becomes more, th more thick, more viscous, and therefore harder to work with. And this makes things difficult, I would suggest, if you are wanting to do fine work with your chocolate. For example, making shells for your chocolate truffles or your bonbons. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's overcomplicating the process. But let me know if you understand why I'm wrong. Let me know. Just drop me a note. After you have reduced your chocolate to the working temperature, you are ready to go. Um, you might remember that I tend to use this bit of kit as well. This is my infrared temperature gun. And this just takes some of the guesswork out of tempering chocolate. It'll tell you what temperature your chocolate is and whether you're close to your working temperature or not. Once you have tempered your chocolate, don't forget to test it as well. Dip in a blade of a knife and tap off the excess into your chocolate. Let it sit and set. In three to five minutes, your chocolate will be set and the brush your fingertips over the surface. 
the idea is if there are no fingerprints left in your wake as you brush the surface of your tempered chocolate, then you're ready to go. Then you can do what you are planning to do with your lovely tempered chocolate. Another beautiful thing about tempered chocolate is that if you have anything left over, you can reuse it. Just spread it onto a work surface covered in a sheet of greaseproof paper, for example. Let it set. You can then break it up and temper it all over again. There you have it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please drop me any questions or comments. I look at them all and I love answering them and engaging with you. So please get in touch. If you're wanting to work with me, I run workshops in the UK. My website is nanettechocolates.co.uk. Thank you for watching.